Welcome everyone to Godly Play. Today, we are going to cover week seven of the Faces of Easter. These are the lessons we cover during Lent. God asked Mary to be the mother of God. And he asked Joseph to be the father of God. When the baby Jesus was born, he looked up into the face of his mother and he could already see the sign of the cross. And when he looked into the Father Joseph's eyes, he could see the cross there as well. The Word was born a wordless child. Mother Mary and Father Joseph gave the baby everything he needed to grow. They kept him warm, they loved him, and they fed him. And he did grow. He grew and grew until about one year he was about 12 years old. And he had gone with his family from their town of Nazareth into the city of Jerusalem. There they were for a great festival. There were a lot of people in town. When it was time to go and they were walking on the road home, Mary and Joseph realized Jesus was not with them. They began to be very afraid. They frantically looked for him. They ran back through the crowd into the city of Jerusalem. They finally ended up at the temple. And there, they saw Jesus. He was talking to a group of rabbis. They went to Jesus and they asked him, Why did you run away? Where are you going? And he said to them, Did you not know that I would be here? In my father's house? Mary and Joseph did not understand. For Joseph's house was in Nazareth, where he was a carpenter. They would not understand, but they would never forget. Sometime later, when Jesus was about 30 years old, he went down to the River Jordan where his cousin John was baptizing people. Now John was a wild man. He ate locusts and honey, and he didn't shave or cut his hair. Jesus went to John and said, Baptize me. John looked at Jesus and said, Me? Baptize you? You are the Messiah. You're the one we've all been waiting for. You should be the one baptizing me. Jesus looked at John and he said, No, it has been written that you will come before me and you will pave the way. You will baptize me. So Jesus went down into the dark water. And when he came up, there was a loud voice that said, This is my son, for who I am well pleased. Many also say that they saw a bright light come down from the heavens and a white dove that flew over just the top of Jesus' head. After Jesus was baptized, he crossed the Jordan River and went into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. When Jesus was in the desert, he began to get very hungry. There wasn't a lot to eat or drink in the desert. One day he heard a loud voice and it said to him, if you are really so hungry, why don't you take one of those stones over there and turn it into bread to eat? Jesus replied, 
No. To be a real human being, we need more than just bread to eat. Then, it was as if Jesus was on top of a high temple. And he heard the voice again. If you are really the Son of God, it said, then why don't you jump and see if your God will send some of his angels to catch you before you fall onto the rocks. And Jesus said, no, we do not need to test God. Then it was as if Jesus was on top of a high mountain and could see all of the kingdoms below. And the voice came back and it said, If you will follow me, I will make you the king over all these kingdoms. Jesus said to them, No, I am to be a king, but not that kind of king. Then the voice went away. Jesus went back across the Jordan and he began to do his work. But what was his work? His work was to come close to people, especially the people no one else wanted to come close to. See, he has come close to this blind man. He is so close that he touched the blind man's eyes. When Jesus came close to people, they changed. They could see things that they could never see before. And they could do things they could never do before. They became well. Jesus also told parables. Finally, he knew that he had to become a parable. So he turned toward Jerusalem for the last time. He was riding on a borrowed donkey. Still, that Sunday, when Jesus came into Jerusalem, people waved palm branches, which were a sign of kings. On Thursday, Jesus and the twelve went to an upper room and shared their last supper together. After they had everything they wanted to eat, Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. When he broke it and said something like, Whenever you break bread like this and share it, I will be there. He also took a cup of wine, gave thanks to God for it, and said, Whenever you share a cup of wine like this, I will be there. What was he talking about? He was still always saying things like that. How could they know? Still, they did not forget and later they would understand. Suddenly, Judas got up and left. The rest went to the Garden of Gethsemane on the Mount of Olives. Jesus wanted to pray. When he finished, he joined the twelve, but Judas came out of the dark and greeted him. This was a signal for the temple guards to take him. They too came out of the shadows and took Jesus away with them into the night. The twelve disappeared into the darkness as well. The night was a confusing one. The next day, Jesus was taken outside the walls of the city and crucified. That afternoon, Jesus died. The sky grew dark. Jesus was taken down from a cross and buried in a cave. A great stone was rolled onto the opening of the cave to close it, sort of like a door. Saturday was so quiet you could almost hear the earth breathing. On Sunday, it was just the woman who had the courage to go to the tomb, just to be close to Jesus. They wanted to remember, even if it was sad. 
When they came to the tomb, they found that the stone had been rolled back and that the tomb was empty. Jesus had died on the cross, but somehow he was still with them as he is with us, especially in the bread and wine. When you look at this side, you know that the other side is there. When you look at this side, you know that this side is there and you cannot pull them apart. This is the mystery of Easter. And that makes all the difference. But wait a minute, there's something wrong. Here's the beginning, the middle, and the end. But if we only have one side, the story has an end. But there's also another side. The ending is also a beginning. So we can't leave the story in a line. Let's see what we can do. Now the story can go on forever. We have where the story begins. We have it in a circle. It goes on all the way till we get to the beginning again. But in the center, we have the Eucharist. The story can never end. Parents, now we have some wandering questions for you to ask your children. We'll begin with this one. I wonder what part of this story you like best. I wonder where you are in this story. Is there a part of this story that is about you? I wonder what part of this story you think is the most important. And finally, I wonder if there is any part of this story that we can leave out and yet still have all the story we need. Thank you for listening this week.